So that title is not clickbait. One of my favorite red grape varieties in the world is Prokupats from Serbia. A lot of people don't even know where Serbia is, or they say Serbia, do they even produce wine? There's actually a long history of winemaking in Serbia. For most of the 20th century, Serbia and Belgrade was the hub of Yugoslavia. When Yugoslavia was together as a country, it was one of the biggest wine producing countries in the world. In the early 90s, when Yugoslavia started to break up into Croatia, Slovenia, North Macedonia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia and Montenegro stayed together and then in 2006 it separated and Serbia became a country in its own right. There are a little over 20,000 hectares of vineyards. It's not bordered by the sea, it's a hilly mountainous country, it's a continental climate, there's a lot of contours which leaves a lot of room for different aspects, a lot of unique terroirs. My wine career began in Georgia, Turkey, Armenia, but the next step was actually going into the Balkan region and Belgrade, Serbia is the first place I went to. I rented a car, this was back in 2016, drove around the country for six weeks visiting all the Rhine region's producers and I was blown away by the quality of wines. There are good Merlots, Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, and especially Chardonnays being made in the country, but Prokupats is a grape that stole my heart. The stronghold of Prokupats is near the town of Alexandrovets in the south in this valley called the Jupa Valley. There's a lot of old bush vines, some of them over 100 years. Those producers kept the tradition, kept this red grape variety alive during socialist times. And now that Prokupats is gaining steam and Serbia sees that it could be the flagship variety, producers are planting it throughout the country. It's not the most planted red grape in the country, but from my personal opinion, it's the most exciting red grape out of Central and Eastern Europe. And that is not an exaggeration. There is some literature out there that suggests that Prokupats might be Syrah, although that's not proven. I don't see a similarity because there is Syrah grown in Serbia. Prokopats to me, especially the old traditional style, the ones from Jupa Valley are earthy. They have an imaginary blend of flavors if you somehow mix Syrah, Gamay, and then the spiciness of Grenache without the high alcohol, that's what you would get. The tannins are usually pretty fine grain. The alcohols range anywhere from 12 and a half to 13 and a half. Sometimes you can get up to 14 degrees of alcohol, but in general, these are medium bodied, earthy, complex red wines, offer a lot of bang for your buck. Unfortunately, a lot of Prokupats do not make it outside of Serbia. Most of them are sold domestically. Although we have a few examples here that can be found in the US and different countries in Europe. I've got 10 different Prokupats here. I actually hand carried these when I came back from judging the Open Balkan competition that was in conjunction with Vine Vision in Belgrade, Serbia, there to promote the wines of North Macedonia, Serbia, and Albania. A lot of these producers I'm pretty friendly with, so it was amazing to see the progress that they've made. I hadn't seen them in years. Funny side note, I left Belgrade to fly back to the U.S. at 6 in the morning, and my bag was definitely overweight, and this is why I love Serbians so much. I put my bag up on the counter it was over by quite a bit. I started pulling out some Serbian wines and the lady at the counter says, that's why you're overweight? And I said, yeah. And she's like, just throw them back in the bag. I'm pretty friendly with a lot of these producers, so that's why I'm tasting blind to take the subjectivity out of it. It's a difficult thing in the wine writing world. A lot of wine writers start to get closer or have relationships with different producers, different regions. That's why you see sometimes these wineries, these regions featured a little bit more often. Robert Parker was pretty popular back in the day because he kept his distance from producers for the most part. Anyways, I'm sure you're ready to discover a new variety. Let's get tasting. I went back and forth on whether I should just taste them all and then reveal at the end or taste one by one and reveal. I'm gonna taste one by one reveal so I can spend a little bit more time with the wine. Wine one is a little bit darker. Prokopats doesn't have tons and tons of color. One game I play, I have a couple producers here from Jupa. I'm gonna see if they're more new style Prokopats or maybe traditional ones. The cool things about these wines in Serbia, you can have them anywhere from 12 to 20 US dollars. I've seen a couple of these abroad under 20 bucks. Oh, I love it, I love it. I mean. As always, I corvin these wines, and then I had somebody mix them up, and I really made sure to corvin these because I hand carried all these wines, and I intend to drink them all throughout the course of the next few months because I love this grape. Starts away earth, pepper, more red fruit, but not sour cherry. Kind of going towards more towards black cherry, more of a red plum. Oh, really, really nice. Maybe even a touch of meaty this. This is a super complex wine. This maybe smells to me more like a traditional Prokopats. Some of the new age Prokopatses are made really light, almost Pinot Noir-like. Prokopats just has a fantastic balance of acidity. The tannins are like are medium grain. A lot of these wines use Serbian oak. This is long, spicy, medium body, exactly the type of red wine I wanna drink. This is pretty darn good. 
super unique. It's really hard to compare. Sometimes they can be a little bit floral. It's really hard to equate Procoupots to any other type of red wine out there. I know I'm really excited about these wines, but I'm 92 points on this. I think it's very good. Exceptional. <laughs> This is one of the godfathers of Procoupots. This is the Ivanovich Procoupots 2021 from Jupa. So I said, more of a traditional style Procoupots. I know that Binnie's in Chicago has this because Chicago has the second largest Serbian population in the world and it's 15 bucks at Binnie's. I love this wine. I think it's excellent. Maybe I shouldn't tell you that because then you will scoop it up. I want to go buy some. That was awesome. <laughs> Number two, you can see a little bit lighter in color. Okay, two smells fresh and fruity. I think this is more of the new age Procoupots. More sour cherry, very Pinot Noir-esque. A little bit of raspberry. It still has a little bit of, not as spicy as the first one, but just a dollop of white pepper. Doesn't have as much body as palate presence. This is more medium body. This is super enjoyable wine. I like the complexity of number one a little bit more. This is, I think the closest comparison, maybe be a more concentrated style of Oregon Pinot Noir. Maybe not as floral, as, as pretty, maybe a little more heavy handed than that, but that's kind of the style we're talking about. I like a touch more length, but still I think it's delicious wine, 89 points. I think it's very, I, I really want to drink it. I think it's good. <laughs> this is the Timet Tri Morave 2019 in Serbia. This comes in at around 16 bucks. I visited this producer several times just recently actually, and he was one of the first producers I visited when I went to Serbia. This wine, when I first started going to Serbia back in 2016, those vintages of the wines around the 2012, 13, these were actually blends. They changed it to 100% Procupats. I think this is a gorgeous wine, delicious stuff. I think they export a little bit to Europe. They're making now a reserve Procupats called Belly Kamen, which is not released yet, which is extraordinary. I tried to get a sample yet. They didn't want to give it to me because it's not on the market yet. I still think this is very good and it's something I'm gonna have a lot of fun drinking. It's in the South, it's not in the Jupa Valley. So I do think maybe the vines are a little bit younger, but still it's it's kind of more of a, it's like in between the new age Procupats and the traditional style. Let's move on to number three. Three's a little bit darker here. Three shows just a touch more wood. Black cherry flavors, it's not as spicy. Oh, hold on a second, hold on a second. You gotta shake it out. A little bit of crushed like rose petal type flavor. God, these are so pretty. These wines are so pretty. Once you shake it out, the wood comes out, the black raspberry really jumps out of the glass. On the palate, really spicy, super spicy. So Procopats to a T. Ambitious, has a little bit more oak, which bothered me at first. However, as I started to drink the wine more and more and more, the length is actually really, really impressive. I think this wine has a future ahead of it. I am 91 plus on it. I would like the oak dialed back a little bit, but I cannot deny the quality. The, the flavor started out shy, then they start to spread out on the palate. Good length here. Good length, let's check it out. I think I know what this wine is. It is the most expensive wine in the bunch. This is the Doya Breg Procupats. This is their single vineyard Procupats 2019. This comes in at 36 bucks. I actually did a harvest here at Doya back in 2017 or 18. Producer in the south of Serbia. They planted a lot of vines dedicated to Procupats and I'm really impressed. That's a serious, ambitious, bigger style of Procupats. Like I said, the wood came on strong a little bit early on, but it was still very good. Let's move on to number four. four in between the color of number three and number one. Sometimes Procupats can have this floralness. Sometimes they can have some green capsicum type notes. It has a touch of it, not too much, just a little bit of floral notes. Kind of got a bubble gum, red raspberry, black raspberry, red cherry thing going on. Mmm, very pretty. Mmm. All fruity up front on the palate. This really feels like a Loire Cabernet Franc because it's got some capsicum notes kind of mixed in with some, you start to get some strawberry fruits of Grenache. Me about it, the tannins start to bite a little bit. Very good. I go back and forth because the nose is so different on the palate. I still really enjoy this wine. I'm a hard 89 points on it. I think it's delicious. I think it's something that I'm gonna enjoy drinking too as well. Let's take a look here. This is 
the Yota Proku Pots 2017. This is a current release. This is about 14 bucks in Serbia. This is their basic wine from the Jupa Valley. So more traditional, you get some of those capsicum earthy notes. So I did pick that out. I think this is delicious. It's not a super well heralded producer. He also makes a Proku Pots made in Amarone style that a lot of the local critics love. I prefer this style a little bit more. Let's move on to number five. I like that I feel like I know Proku Pots a little bit that the, the ones that were from the Jupa stood out. This is complex. I think I know what this wine is because it has a touch of age. Capsicum, this really, really has dried flower, just a touch of incense, red raspberry, cherry. This is something that's just completely unique from any type of red wine grape. Oh, wonderful. Lighter, medium body, tangy acidity, has a lot of bell pepper mixed in with the red fruit. You got a lot of spiciness on the back end. I think this is gorgeous stuff. I'm at 92 plus points because this is so unique. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. It's exactly what I thought it was. This is the Budimir Boye Lila Procupats VA Vines 2013. This is the current release. I've been to this vineyard before. 100 year old vines, bush vines. This to me and some of the local critics believe that this is maybe the greatest Proku Pots in Serbia. It's just that you have to wait a long time before they release new vintages. I've done verticals of this. Well, the first vintage I think was 11 and I've tasted all the way to 2018, I think, wines that are unreleased. I gave this 92 plus points. Here's the kicker. In Serbia, this is 18 bucks. During the wine vision, they had a master class and I brought an Italian producer to the master class with me and she was so impressed with this wine, especially at that price point. This is not available in the US. I know Budimir does make a lighter Proku Pots wine that's got this purple label. This is like 10 bucks in the US. You gotta go to Serbia to experience that and I hope you do because I think that's just absolutely gorgeous stuff. By the way, that is from Jupa. Funny story about this producer. The mascot of the winery is the old grandpa that's super old that's been, they say he's got 70 harvests under belt when i visited him he actually makes some of his own wine to sell in the local market they puts in a plastic one and a half or three liter jugs and i buy a lot of them he makes riesling that's fantastic that's really cool let's move on to number six here six smells a little bit brighter this smells a lot like a beaujolais just nice mix of red fruit plus earthiness i mean a lot like a beaujolais i think this is pro Coupots. that's a fairly newly planted vines more of a newer style Medium, this taste, I would love to put this in a Beaujolais tasting. 90 points, it's got the spicy, God, Grenache has spiciness, Syrah has some spiciness too, but sometimes with those grapes you can get higher alcohol. That's why I love Proku Pots. They're more medium bodied, you still have the earthiness, but you have the spiciness. I wonder if this, at first I thought this was maybe one of the new age Proku Pots, but now I don't, that's why I'm gonna stick to my guns here. 90 points, I think it's delicious. This is the Matal, the Bukowski Cuve, 70% Prokupats, 30% Zacinac. I know I cheated a little bit here. Zacinac, though, is a spicy grape. I've tasted out of the barrel. Doesn't have a lot of flavor, just adds some tannins. This is 20 bucks, 2020. Matal makes one of Serbia's greatest wines, the Kremen Kemen, Cabernet Sauvignon. I actually have the first three vintages in my cellar. I'm waiting to pop those. When I saw him at the show, I was so happy for him because when I first visited him, he was making wines in a garage. Now he's got a huge winery restaurant, one of Serbia's most revered winemakers. I think this wine is outstanding, 20 bucks. I think it's delicious. It's got structure, really tastes like a high-end Beaujolais. Kudos to Nikola, kudos. My only great sadness is I wish these wines were more readily available. When I'm in Serbia, I actually used to live there part of the time when I was traveling around the world full time. I'd spend maybe two, three months a year in Serbia just to stay up with the winemaking. Plus I love Be Belgrade. And I miss being able to drink these wines every single day. Let's move on to number seven. Seven, I think, is definitely more of a new style Prokupats. Mm. Seven is more sour cherry, red raspberry. Just got a hint of white pepper. This is more the Pinot Noir-esque style of Prokupats. On the palate, this really feels a lot like maybe some really high quality Australian Pinot Noir. You get some more strawberry, red raspberry fruit, but the mouthfeel is so silky. The tannins are so fine grain. I know some local writers were kind of against the style of Proku Pots because it's just another, just light, good red wine. I think this is really pretty. I'm gonna give it 91 points. Let's take a look. Let's 
what I thought it was. This is the Alexandrovich. This is the Prokupats 2020. This is available in the US around 16 to 20 bucks. I think this is outstanding. Al Alexandrovich was one of the first private producers in Serbia. Some of their better wines are Bordeaux blends. They've just started their Prokupats project recently. I think this is outstanding and blind. It's really good. 91 points. Cool that you can get uh, that wine in the US too. Let's move on to number eight here. Is This is Jupa because it, it kind of resembles this Budimir style. A little bit of capsicum, a little bit of bell pepper, crushed purple flowers, and then red fruit like crazy. This is unique. This is something that, again, most people haven't come across before. On the palate, it's got this very unique blend of red fruit flavors and crushed flour. Tannins are a little bit firm here. Gorgeous, and I love the uniqueness of this wine. 91 plus points. This is what I thought. This is the Choco Winery Radovan, named after him. It's written in Cyrillic here. This comes in at 19 bucks in Serbia, 2020. This is 100% Prokupats. This producer, also near and dear to my heart, I visited him when he was in a garage making 12,000 bottles a year. When I visited him last time, he said he's up to 55,000 bottles. He's been planting like crazy. He has a basic Prokupats called The Experiment, which I think is gorgeous. This is his top wine. It's unique. I actually have the very first vintage he made of this wine, 2015, in the cellar, waiting to crack that open. 91 plus points. Unique, gorgeous stuff. And a lot of these producers that I, I liked, and I like the wines not blind, they're showing really well blind, so that makes me happy. Let's move on to number nine here. Nine is like a blend between new age and old school poker pets, because it's got earthiness. It's got the red raspberry, it's got black cherry, it's got a little bit of a bubble gum type note. A little bit of pepper, medium body, and extremely spicy in the back end. Extremely spicy. Light to medium body. It's so funny that Prokupats to me are the most interesting red wines in Serbia, although they're not the most expensive. The most expensive red wines tend to be Merlot or Cabernet based blends, bigger wines. This type of wine, maybe the local market doesn't think it's big enough, but for me, I absolutely love this style. I'm 90 plus points on it. I think it's a blend between New Age and old school Prokupats, and it is. This is the Matias. This is the Chukundeda Prokopats 2020 in Serbia. This comes in at 15 bucks. This is in the region of Shumadja. It's right in the center of Serbia, really hilly area. Kind of looks like Tuscany in a way. Fairly new producer, used to be a basketball player. Met him as a super tall guy. This is not his most expensive wine, but to me it's the most interesting. He makes very expensive award-winning Sauvignon Blanc, but to me the Prokopats, that's totally where it's at. I love it. Again, that's why you can't always listen to scores. You gotta know the style of wine you're looking for, your own palate. A lot of these wines aren't gonna be blockbusters, but everything here I would prefer to drink over a lot of bigger wines. They're just so pretty, they're so unique. That's why to me, these unique wine countries, these unique wine grapes are really where my heart's at. It's just unfortunately, that's not gonna get the most views, the most traction. I know personally because I used to write extensively about these wines. Let's move on to number 10. 10 is also a blend of new and old style. I love it. Soy sauce, black cherry, red plum, earth, really complex. Silky mouthfeel extremely spicy, like super spicy. This is gorgeous. Mm. 92 points. I think it's brilliant. I think I know what it is because I think I know what the last last one is, if I remember right. This is the Doya Prokupats. This is their basic Prokupats. Remember I talked about the Breg, the single vineyard one, which I gave 91 plus. This is their basic. I gave 92 points. It's $15 in Serbia. I have seen small quantities in America and are in the $16 to $20 range. I absolutely love this wine. I think it's gorgeous, unique. It's Prokopats to a T. This is a new project. I don't know how he still gets the Prokopats to be more traditional tasting. And I'm glad that you might be able to find this in the US, although you have to hunt a little bit. So my highest scored wines were actually the Budimir Boye Lila, the Doya, which we just tasted, and the first wine, the Ivanovich Prokopats, which are wines that are very fairly priced, although I personally would love to drink the Matal. I, I mean, I'd love to drink all these wines. So tell me, have you ever tasted Prokopats before? Are there any obscure grape varieties that you've fallen in love with, like I love Prokopats? Drop it in the comments below.